Everything you're about to see in this new Jedi Survivor trailer is real in-game footage. The developers have said this is something they're proud of, that nothing here is a pre-rendered cutscene that you'll be playing and experiencing every moment here. The final trailer for Jedi Survivor just dropped, revealing that this game is even more brutal and more epic than we first thought. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> if you have any questions about the trailer, let me know in the comments. I'll try to get to them in a future video. Subscribe if you want to see that. We start things off with Cal picking himself up off the ground. He looks like he's wounded. He grabs his stomach. It appears to be in some kind of red, orange desert sandstorm. The list of sand planets in Star Wars is quite extensive, so this could be Geonosis, it could be Jetta, it could be Tatooine, it could be Pasana. I'm sure there's more. But one thing I will say, if he was wearing a poncho, just as actor Cameron Monaghan seems to want him to be doing all the time. Will there be a poncho in the game? Poncho. 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 Well, first thing I notice is he's not wearing a poncho. In Cameron! The then he probably wouldn't be having as much trouble in the storm. We then have a bunch of stormtroopers walking towards Cal as he deflects their blaster bolts. In the background, we can see some inscriptions on the wall, and he appears to be on that same sand planet. This next shot with a few TIE fighters flying over it looks like a similar map to Dathomir in the way that it's structured. It looks like you're going to be going up to that peak way at the top, where it looks like there's an entrance to a temple. This honestly looks a lot like Jeddah, but could be somewhere completely different. We then get a look at Cal having a conversation with Seer, who we've seen in previous trailers. She seems to have reconnected with her Jedi roots and is doing something important in terms of collecting a database of Jedi stuff, I don't know. She's got the tats now. But throughout this trailer, I just want to point out her monologue as well. The things she's saying, saying that Cal was sent off to war when he was only a boy and now he's got the weight of the galaxy on his shoulders. It's huge and it just adds so much more scope to everything that's going on here in the galaxy at this time and in Cal's reality. Cal's then fighting a bunch of stormtroopers with the double-bladed lightsaber stance in a street that looks like it could be Coruscant, but could also be somewhere else, another city, another somewhere. But honestly, this looks a lot like one of those levels from the cancelled Star Wars 13. 13 and that doorway at the back looks like the entrance to a bar we've seen like from Attack of the Clones so I'd say this is probably Coruscant. I also want to point out his double bladed lightsaber move here. This is one of the combos you can perform in the game and as you probably know combat has been extensively developed since Jedi Fallen Order. Cal does what's basically an uppercut into an overhead helicopter spin into a downward slam pushing back several of the enemies. The next shot is on the planet Kobo which is the giant open world hub which I got to play through with my three hours with the game and this giant beast here that BD one is scanning is I think a creature we saw way in the distance in one of the previous trailers and I love that in these games the giant creatures always seem to be like the friendly ones. In Fallen Order there were similar giant creatures on Bagano and Kashyyyk. You guys remember the Shio bird from Kashyyyk? Also you'll notice that BD1 now has rocket boosters. He can hover, he nearly gets himself into trouble here and saves himself by hovering just before he gets to the ground. Just like R2-D2, I guess, in Attack of the Clones, got the jet boosters on each side of him. BD-1 can now do the same. The next shot in this trailer reveals just how much more brutal Survivor is than Jedi Fallen Order. Oh! Cal goes from a wall run while deflecting blaster bolts into a forward dash, which I'm pretty sure is something you couldn't do in the previous game either, into a downward slam which dismembers this poor stormtrooper's right leg. Like I've said in previous videos, for this poor stormtrooper, this was probably just another day at the office. He was looking forward to going home and seeing his wife and kids and now he no longer has a leg because Cal's coming in with the Stormtrooper Slayer 2000. Absolutely brutal. Also, if you play this in slow motion, you'll notice that the exact point where Cal slices is where the Stormtrooper's leg dismembers. I don't think this game has what's called dynamic dismemberment, which is where exactly where Cal slices will cut. This is more scripted. But there does seem to be some sort of locational value or accuracy with where you're slicing up Stormtroopers and where it's displayed playing their injuries. Ah! Also, no idea what this planet is, to be honest. It could be the same sand planet we just saw before, or it could be somewhere entirely different. This next shot, I think, is quite interesting. In the background behind Cal, we can see these kind of purple crystal things. I'm not sure if these are collectibles or if it's just part of the environment. This looks like a new location. Cal is also looking at a hologram of a certain character. I have no idea who this character is. My first guess was Eno Cordova, who was actually Sears, Jedi Master. I don't know why I thought of him. Just thought the vibe in this shot was similar to the first game. It could be someone else. It could be Bo. It could be another Jedi, it could be another character, it could be anyone. Dunno. Okay, we're back on the sand planet in the next shot, and Cal is riding speeder bike. I believe they're a very similar model of speeder bike to the ones we saw in Return of the Jedi, the classic speeder bikes from the Forest of Endor. They're being ridden by scout troopers, and this is something you'll be doing in the game. You'll notice up here, Bode is actually riding with you, so perhaps this is one of the co-op kind of companion missions. And Cal is absolutely savage. This is likely a quick time event where you can push the stormtrooper up off his speeder bike into the flight path of a TIE fighter. <laughs> <laughs> 
Here, Cal is looking out a window on what looks like Coruscant. The next shot, we get our first look at the Imperial Palace, which was once the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. I love that this is a location in the game. The Imperial Palace is otherwise known as the Emperor's Palace, and is actually Emperor Palpatine's home on Coruscant after the fall of the Jedi. I'm really curious if we'll actually be able to go to this location, and perhaps this will be one of the major story events in the game. You'll have to go here. Can you imagine facing the Emperor in Jedi Survivor? Oh my gosh. Okay, we're midway through this trailer. I just want to give you another bit of insight into the scope of Jedi Survivor. To download on PC, EA just revealed that the file size is 155 gigabytes. You need 155 gigabytes of free space to install this on your PC. For a comparison, Jedi Fallen Order was only around 50 gig. Red Dead Redemption, one of the biggest open world games created in the past, what, five, six years? That game is 150 gig. Jedi Survivor is bigger than Red Dead Redemption 2. That's nuts. But I think you can see why the game looks Looks truly next gen, like a huge extension of what Fallen Order did. This here is Marin, and it looks like the Stinger Mantis crew are getting back together. We can see Grease is actually sitting in the cockpit, and Boat, the new character, is in the other chair. They look like they're on a snow planet. I don't know where this is. Perhaps it's Ilum. Maybe they'll go back to Ilum. Not sure. This next shot of the droid and Cal is at Rambler's Reach. This is the hub world location on Kobo. This is kind of where Grease's cantina is. This is where the shop is, Domodendra's store, where you can purchase haircuts, mullet, that kind of stuff. And the droid is holding what looks like some kind of artifact, maybe a transmitter. It looks kind of similar to one of those Jedi comlinks, but it's likely an object of some importance. So Cal and Bode are having a bro moment here, shaking each other's hands. I think this is in the cantina as well. The Rancor! You guys have seen the gameplay of the Rancor. I got to face this thing. It is scary. It will kill you in one hit. Be careful. It will snap all of Cal's bones in half. We got Grease, BD-1, and Marin looking out the door of the Singer Mantis. Cal is facing an ATST during the sandstorm on whatever this sand planet is. And I have to say, in the first game in Fallen Order, after the ATST fell over and you defeated it, the driver of the ATST would crawl out and you could stab him with your lightsaber. In this game, you can take that a step further before even taking down the ATST. You can get on top, use the force to pull out the driver. Cal is just like 10 times more savage in Survivor. Here we can see some tag team gameplay of Cal taking down a BX commando droid with the help of Marin. Marin seems to have a new staff weapon as well. Not quite a lightsaber, but looks like she'll be using this in combat quite frequently. I have no idea what this is in the next shot. Marin is using her magic. Cal is using the force. This is like a giant tentacle mechanical transformer machine monster that's about to eat both of them and they're using the force to stop it from doing so. This here is a boss battle with Ravis, the Gendai character. Gendai, you might have seen in other videos I've made, are a species that are hundreds of years old, extremely rare, and basically unkillable. Do you guys remember the character from the animated Cartoon Network Clone Wars series that Obi-Wan faces, that a lot of other Jedi face and fall at the hands of? That guy was a Gendai, basically unkillable. And that's what this guy here is. But he also has a giant mace as a weapon, and at different points in this gameplay, you can also see some of his armor has come off, revealing his tentacle-like limbs, which repair themselves whenever he gets injured. Here you can see as well, Cal like runs in and tries to kick him and just like completely gets whacked. Also, you'll notice Cal is using the cross guard stance here, which is the heavy stance in the game. Deals the most damage, but also swings the slowest. I guess the Gendai isn't really a quick character, so you'll get away with using this stance against him and it can deal a lot of damage, but at the same time, I think it's still gonna be super tricky. Also, they are in some kind of space station location, it looks like. You can see out to space in each of these shots through the windows. Not sure where they are, but it's definitely not on a planet. Here they are. We have Droidikas. This is our first proper look at Droidika gameplay in the game, what was also notable about this is that they're in a Separatist ship. It's a Separatist hallway, similar to what we saw in The Phantom Menace throughout the Clone Wars. What are they doing here? Why are they in a Separatist ship? I love it. It's awesome. Suddenly we're playing Battlefront 2. I love the Cal just slices through the shield as well, like it's no worries, mate, and then slices the poor droidica in half. You can just slice them up. No worries. Seer then says we must stand against the darkness, and then we get a shot of this droid once again with BD-1 and Cal and the enemy, who we still don't really know who he is. And Cal and this guy are fighting over that artifact we saw the droid holding earlier, so clearly it does have some significance. Cal is then riding the Neko on Kobo. There's another one next to him as the Sting Mantis flies past. Okay, this next shot is really interesting because Cal is facing another Jedi-like character. I'm not sure if this is the same guy from before and he's just wearing a helmet. It looks like a blast shield kind of thing, but he also has a double-bladed lightsaber. So is this another character? Are there other Jedi evil characters in the game or is this someone entirely different or is it the same guy from before. I don't know. Another look at the tag team gameplay with Bo Dakuna just completely bullying this poor scout trooper who probably just wants to go home and see his wife and kids. 
Next shot, Ravis is holding a blaster in his hand with a heavy fire rate and in the other hand, his mace. Wait, or has his arm turned into a Gatling gun? I'm not sure, but another look at the boss fight here. This one looks ridiculous, even though the guy moves slowly and it, you can probably get a bunch of hits in. His health bar, I'm gonna assume, is ridiculous, especially playing on Jedi Grandmaster. It's gonna be nearly impossible. This trailer is ridiculous. Is there anything else here you noticed that I missed? Let me know in the comments. Also, stick around for lots more Jedi Survivor content coming soon. And watch this video here for 50 of your Jedi Survivor questions answered. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon.